Okay, so the first thing we want to do is make sure our pan's good and clean and sanitized. You can spray it out with some distilled white vinegar and then rinse that off. And that'll get it good and sanitized. And then once you have that clean and sanitized, put it on your stove. And you're going to add two gallons of whole milk. Uh, this is just pasteurized, homogenized milk from the grocery store. Nothing too fancy. So once we get that in there, then we can warm it up. And our target temperature, the first target temperature, is going to be 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, we want to bring it up slowly to that temperature. This particular pot is a very, very heavy bottom pot, so I can actually use fairly high heat to get it there quick. But if your pot doesn't have a super thick bottom, then you will want to actually either do this in like a double boiler setup or just apply very low heat. So once we get the milk in there, we can kick the heat on. And then we're just gonna bring that up to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. And um, you can use a cheese thermometer or I use a probe thermometer. And what I do is I take a binder clip and clip it to the side. And then I take my probe and put it through there and down into the milk. Oops, I missed one of the handles put it through the handles and down into the milk and then flip one of the handles and that holds it in place and that way it doesn't get too far underwater or under the milk and then you can take your probe thermometer and then set your target temperature Oh, it's already at 57 degrees, so I actually don't even need to heat this before the first step. Um, I had the milk sitting out on the counter for a little while. But anyway, you would set this target temperature to 55, and once it gets to 55, then you can, um, you can go ahead and add the next ingredients. Okay, so we're going to need a half teaspoon of calcium chloride. Um, this is um, pickle crisp granules. Um, it's calcium chloride in a, in a granular form. So we're going to need a half teaspoon of that, and we're going to dilute it in about a quarter of a cup of water. There's a half teaspoon. We'll put it in that quarter cup of water. And then we'll stir it. It's going to take a little bit for that to dissolve. Um, we'll let that set while we're getting the next ingredient, which is distilled white vinegar. So we need one cup of distilled white vinegar. And just measure that out. Now you could also use um, three teaspoons, or actually three teaspoons is one tablespoon. So you could actually use one tablespoon of um powdered citric acid and then dilute that in water which would give you uh you know the right amount of acid for the amount of milk that we're using and you need the acid to help the cheese stretch once you're heating up the curds so stick with me on that you'll see later but uh, for now we need a cup of distilled white vinegar and the half teaspoon of calcium chloride diluted into about a quarter cup of water and then we'll just stir that into the milk. So we're gonna get the milk moving. We're gonna add our diluted calcium chloride into the milk. Stir that in really well. Um, try not to incorporate too much air. I don't know why but I've heard that many times. So just stir it gently, kind of lift from the bottom up so everything gets mixed around well. And then we're going to add in our cup of distilled white vinegar. And we'll stir that in too. And now we just need to heat this mixture up to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'll kick the heat on and come back when we get there. For this recipe you're also going to want to dilute a teaspoon of liquid uh, rennet into it. I happen to have animal rennet. You can order this online. There's several cheese making companies or you could get it on Amazon. 
Um, anyway, you can use animal rennet, you could use vegetable derived rennet, or you could use um, rennet tablets if you would prefer. Um, I like the liquid because it's much easier to work with. But we're going to have to put a teaspoon of rennet in here. So we'll measure that out. Put it in there. And we're going to stir that into a quarter of a cup of water just to even everything out. And once we reach our target temperature on the milk over here, we will add the rennet. You want to stir your milk pretty consistently while it's warming up just to keep the temperature even throughout. Um, and then once you get up to 90 degrees, you can turn the heat off. Uh, shot up there for a second, but now it dropped back down to 88. Uh, you may notice as you're um, stirring, it's already starting to form some curds from the acid in the vinegar. So um, don't freak out if you see lumps in your milk. It's supposed to be that way. But we'll stir this a little bit more. And when it comes up to 90 again, like that, then we can mix in our rennet. Shut that off for you so it's not pestering us. But uh, the rennet is diluted because this is what really gels up the milk. So we're gonna um, remove our thermometer. And then turn the heat off. And we're, while we're stirring, we're gonna pour the rennet in slowly. Now we only want to stir for about a minute, actually a little less than a minute. Um, usually I count while I'm doing it and I just count a slow count to 30. As long as you're mixing well and bringing you know, the bottom up to the top and getting it mixed in. And then once you feel like you've got it good and stirred in, then we're going to take a break. You can see it's already breaking up into bigger clumps now. And we'll cover that up and we'll wait for five minutes. Get our timer set and get it starting. All right, in five minutes, we'll come back to that. All right, now that our five minutes is up, we will check to make sure our curd is set. And a lot of times it's just like a big cake or like a big hunk of white jello in there. Um, it looks like this one, this set of curds is kind of broken apart already. And that does that sometimes, but that's okay. But you want to make sure you have good firm curd. And if it's one big cake, then you will cut it into cubes. I'm just doing this just as an example. It is kind of cakey. Um, cut it up into cubes. And the reason you're cutting this into cubes is so that the next step when we heat it back up or heat it up a little hotter to our next target temperature, you want it to be broken up into pieces so that they can all evenly heat. Um, as you heat it, the curds are going to expel more whey. You can see that there's clearly white chunks in there with the clear whey around the edges there. So um, that's our goal here is to separate the curds from the whey. So we're going to kick the heat back on, get our thermometer set back up, and get that in here in the curd, lock it down, plug it into our base unit, and then we're going to set a new target temperature. So now our new target temperature is going to be 105 degrees. So we're going to set this thermometer to 105 uh, with our heat on. And then as it comes up to 105, we're going to stir so that everything gets equally heated in the entire pot. So now we're set at 105. And all we have to do is stir. I'm going to stir this. If you see any big chunks, you can cut them apart with the side of your spoon and just stir. It should only take a few minutes because you only have, uh, you know, 20 degrees to raise the temperature or whatever. 15 degrees to go up. We're already at 100. 
I'll leave the camera going while I do this, even though it might take a little while. All right, so now that we've met our temperature of 105 degrees, we can get this thermometer back out of here, turn the heat off, and move on to the next step. I moved over to the sink and put a clean stainless steel bowl in there. And I'm going to put a um, stainless steel colander in there. And now I'm going to line that colander with some muslin. You can use cheesecloth or muslin. Uh, you can even get away without using any cloth at all, especially if you have a fine strainer. Uh, if you don't use any cloth, it can get stuck in the little... Um, crevices of the uh, strainer so that's why I like to use the cloth. Now the cloth I pre-soaked it I don't know if you can tell that it's wet there I completely soaked it with uh, vinegar and then wrung out all the vinegar from the cloth till it's just damp and having it damp like that allows it to uh, release from the curds a little bit more. So the reason we have the bowl and the strainer in there and the cloth is so that we can separate the curds from the whey. So we're going to bring our bowl or our pot over and we're going to very slowly pour the curds and whey into our setup here. We need the bowl there so we can capture the whey because the whey is going to come into its function. Uh, after we strain it, we're going to heat it up, and that will allow us to warm up these curds even further in the whey. And when we warm them up in the whey, they will start to melt a little bit and get stretchy. So just go work to get all the stuff out you can, all the curds out of the thing that you can. And then you just gather the corners of the cheesecloth, or muslin in this case. Get the corners and then grab the little bits in between. And lift that up. And we're going to let gravity get a bunch more weight out of that. We can actually move that over to the pot. And then we can take out the strainer because we're done with that. You want to rinse that off quick because when this... Um, the milk byproducts start to uh, dry on this. It makes kind of a sheen. It's almost like plastic and it's really hard to clean off. So we'll pull this bowl out. At this point, I would normally just carry the bowl over to the stove. But since the camera's set up here, I'll put the pot down into the stove and then I'll pour that way back into the pot and now I'll take the whey over to the stove and warm it up. And I've got that heating up. The target temperature for that is 180 degrees. I set the timer back in and then I thought I'd come back and show you what this is looking like. You can see it's still draining some whey out quite a bit actually. We can add that to the pot too. You don't really need to squeeze it but you want to squeeze it a little bit to get some extra way out you can what we're trying to do here is form this into a ball or like a disc and <laughs> I can hear my timer going off there this is going quick well turns out it wasn't the it wasn't the thermometer going off that it had reached the 180 degrees I had forgot to change the temperature to 180 degrees and it had just warmed the way up back to the last target temperature so anyway as I was saying, we're trying to form this curd into a sort of a disc so it's kind of flat. I mean, you don't want to press it, press it flat, but you want it to be, you know, thin and wide. And that way when we put it in the hot way over on the stove, it can heat more even, evenly throughout the whole disc. Um, so we're just going to move this back into the colander. We'll put this little bit away in with the rest of it. And we're just going to let that drain while the whey heats up to 180. You 
can see how the curd has already formed a nice solid mass. And now the object is to heat this up and it let it expel more whey. So I'll take that over to the hot whey and let it soak for about a minute. And then I will set up on the countertop and come back and I'll show you where we go from there. All right, so now we're at 180 degrees. You can see they're just starting to get a couple of bubbles around the edge of the pot. It's at a very bare simmer. So we can take off the thermometer and turn off the heat. And we'll pull the way away from the hot burner. And now we can come over here and get our cheese. And we want to be careful because this is very hot stuff in this pot. But we're going to gently lower that into there and let it sit for about a minute or two and just warm up. In the meantime, I will get this bowl ready so I can knead the cheese in the bowl. Okay, so it's been a minute or so. Now remember, this water is extremely hot. It is just shy of boiling. I'm in 32 more, if I heated it up 32 more degrees, it would actually be boiling. So if your hands, like mine, can't handle that kind of heat, you will want to use a spoon or something to get this out of the water. Now with this method, you are most likely going to have some very hot hands. It's a good idea to have a thing of cold water. Now if you look the bottom that was in there, it's starting to soften up a little bit because it's getting warm, but it's not warm through. It's starting to warm up to where it's just, you know, I can still touch it. It's not super hot. But since it's not warm through, I'm going to take it, put it back in the way, and give it another minute. Okay, it's been another minute or so. I'm going to flip it over. I'll grab my spoon back out. Now to get this out, I'm putting my spoon under the bottom edge of the cheese and then using my thumb on the top of the cheese and getting quickly over to the bowl. Now I could tell when I picked that up it's much softer and more malleable but it's still kind of cottage cheesy looking. See how it's a little crumbly? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to knead it by folding it, pushing down, folding it, pushing down. And what that's doing is that's taking the hot parts from the outside and mixing them with the cooler parts on the inside. Now, if I can, I would like to be able to pick this back up, but it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to. So what instead I will do is I will dip some of the hot whey from the pan into here to heat the curd some more. All right, so this is still really, really hot. A lot of people use um, some heat resistant gloves to do this. You can also use a spoon. I don't happen to have any heat resistant gloves here. So I'm going to use this spoon and I'm going to start folding this over on itself and trying to make it warm evenly throughout. Now when you add this hot whey to this cooler cheese mixture, it's going to cool the whey down and it, you won't reach your target temperature. Or you don't really have a specific target temperature, but it won't get hot enough to pull the curd or pull the cheese into strings. So we're going to mix this up, add a little bit more hot whey, and then let it go for a little longer. So I'm just going to dip some more of the whey out of the big pot into the bowl to warm the curds a little further. I'll let that sit for a couple minutes and I'll be back. Okay, so it's been a couple more minutes. Um, I can pull the curds out and see they're pressing very nicely. They're getting a little stretchier, but my whey is cooling down a little too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and pour it into another bowl with a strainer. And that way I can take the cheese curds out, strain them, and press them together in the original bowl. Now, ooh, that's hot, baby. 
Now, as I press them together, there's still that cottage cheese feel to them. So, we're going to have to add more of the very hot whey from the pan. To these curds. Once that weighs in there, I'm going to actually take the way that I got strained out of the curds and I'm going to put this back into the pan and then I'm going to crank the heat up to get that back up hot enough to warm the curds and that can heat while these are heating in this bowl. Alright, so let's go another time and see if we're there yet. It doesn't look like it. Sometimes, for no explainable reason, or easily explainable anyway, it gives you a lot more trouble than others. Sometimes it comes together pretty quick, and sometimes it doesn't. So, what I might have to do is try a different method. Let some of that whey drain pop it in there, press that together, see if it'll hold together. Still not holding together. All right, so since that's not holding together, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, oops, sir, I'm going to cover these curds with hot whey one more time. Well, hopefully one more time. Maybe a couple more times. But I'm going to cover these with whey. It's nice and steamy. And then I'm going to take the bowl away I just drained and then pour that back into the pot. And finally, I'm going to take this bowl with the curds and whey in it and set it on top of the pan so I have sort of a double boiler thing going. I've got the heat on already. And I'm going to let that heat for a while, and I'll come back and see if we've made progress. Okay, so I've let this go for just about 10 minutes like this. Let's see where we're at now. We're getting pretty darn close. So I'm going to strain this one more time. And since it's giving me so much trouble, I'm going to try a new method. Pull this out, let most of the whey drain off, and then I'll put it back into this bowl. And I'm going to pour this whey back into the pot. And now, rather than having this soaking in whey, I'm going to put it back on the double boiler situation. still not holding together. Uh, it's kind of holding together. So, but it's definitely not stretchy. So I'm going to continue to heat this, but rather than having it soak in whey while I heat it, I'm going to put the lid over the bowl, turn the heat back on, and let it go some more. Okay, so it's been about 10 more minutes. Let's see what we're looking at now. It's getting a little softer. Getting a little concerned about this batch. Of course, it'd be a rough batch the first time I ever make it on a video. It's usually a rather easy process, but so I'm going to knead this. I'm using the spoon because it's pretty hot. See if we can get that to come together. Still expressing some whey, so we know we're getting a little better. Well, my next best guess is just give it a little bit more time. 
Cheese making isn't always easy, and it doesn't always work perfectly. But we'll see if we can salvage this batch. I'm going to spread this out thin so it has more contact with the heat from below. Put the lid on it. And give it a little bit more time. I'm getting a sneaky suspicion that this cheese is just not going to come together as a mozzarella. We can, however, still salvage it and have it be more like a, uh, a farmer's cheese. So I'm going to go ahead and put the salt in. We have the two teaspoons of salt here. We'll put that in. And then we'll mix it in well. Now that it's mixed in well, I'm going to still give it another try and hope it comes together, but if it doesn't, we'll press it into a uh, form and let it just chill as a solid chunk. Okay, let's see where we're at now. Yeah, this one is not coming together. This should be melting together into one solid mass. But since it's not, we're still going to salvage it and press it into a form of some type. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll take this cheese. I'll try to press some of the whey out of it. Yeah, being this hot, it should be all stuck together and gooey. But since it's not, we're going to take it and we'll put it in this glass container. I'm not sure if it'll all fit in one container or not. But we're going to try to press it in there so it will. So these are basically just cheese curds that didn't form together. They're still going to be tasty. They're just not going to be in the stretched fresh mozzarella balls like we had hoped. Yeah, I'm going to be able to just get this all into one container. Press that down firmly, and then I'll pop a lid on it, and I'm going to stick this in the refrigerator and let it um, cool down, and we'll come back later for a taste test. Well, we broke into this cheese last night, and it turned out pretty good. I'm going to pull it out of the container here, if I can and show you how it turned out. It's a little crumbly, but it slices pretty well. And it's quite tasty, but it's not, it's more like a, if you've ever had squeaky cheese curds, it's a lot like that. It's good, but it's not what I was going for. Um, next time we'll do it again and show you the right way to make fresh mozzarella. Thanks for joining us.